KPV could be a no-brainer peptide for anyone on a high fiber diet, as although it feeds those beneficial gut microbes, it also increases fermentation and mechanical load. On top of that, you've got plant's defense compounds like lectins and oxalates, which can transiently irritate those epithelial cells. And then over the years, that can gradually break down those junction proteins which then, then releases endotoxins into your body, driving chronic inflammation. So first I'm gonna give you an overview of KPV, discussing its healing properties, and comparing it with the other popular oral peptide, BPC-157. And then I'll discuss the reasons why I'm starting to use it and how I'm alternating between those two peptides. So KPV is classified as a tripeptide. It's a fragment of alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, but it doesn't have any of those pigment inducing effects. And it's been shown to directly suppress NF-kappa B, your inflammatory signaling pathway. So it can downregulate cytokines like uh, TNF-alpha and IL-6 in the intestinal tissue. It also stabilizes mast cells, which get activated from an immune response, in particular from an allergic reaction or an intolerance. And as mentioned before, it uh, increases gene expression, upregulates it in those junction proteins, in particular ZO1 and occludin. Since I'm on the topic of pathways, let's make a quick distinction between it and BPC-157. So BPC, that is more leaning towards um, like repair, or you know, particularly of connective tissue, as well as vasculature as well. But in the case of oral, it's leaning more towards mucosal membrane integrity whereas bpc sorry whereas kpv that is going that's more towards um avoiding that reignition of inflammation you know from a constant dietary load so think of bpc as you know regenerate repair whereas uh, kpv that's more anti-flare stabilization as well Jumping over to data on KPV, there's a mouse study, uh, like a colitis model with them, and they were given oral KPV, and it lowered their epithelial TNF-alpha by an impressive 50 to 60%, and it just shown to uh, restore that um, mucosal integrity. In addition, it actually decreased myeloperoxidase, which is an oxidative stress marker, and I'm gonna come on to this with my own results. There was one in vitro using human epithelial cells exposed to endotoxins, and it was shown to downregulate uh, IL-6 expression, that mRNA expression, and then when you look at how it works, it's transported through the PEPT-1, and that's actually, remember it's only three amino acids long, so it's easily absorbed through the oral route. And the, the, yeah, PEPT-1 is upregulated when exposed to, when it's in, in a, an inflamed state, that cell is actually upregulated. So that means, so KPV is actually more effective when your gut is inflamed. And on the topic of chronic inflammation, mine has been a weak point over the years. I have made progress because I, I measure it epigenetically, which doesn't give you transient up and down readings, very long-term projections of it. And for me, yeah, I've made great improvements with uh, my IL-6. It did. I did get an increase in July, but I did a senolytic peptide like a FOXO4 DRI and Intense that just four days before. So I did get a, an artificial pulse in IL-6. And yeah, so I think it is it's coming down since then. And just around then I was doing a cycle of that peptide I mentioned earlier, BPC-157, and I only just started it. Normally I wouldn't do an epigenetic test around when I'm doing all these things, but my previous results, I had an error because again, I was doing things to like change my metabolism midway through a cycle. My, um, my fuel source switching to more glycolysis during that. And so that gave me an error, like having those big swings from a, you know, lipolysis to glycolysis. So now I'm just moving forward, not having doing any intense cycles just before testing, you know, like around three weeks, something like that. But yeah, so my IL-6, for some people I speak to, they can make really good progress getting that IL-6 down. If it's from visceral fat and they make great reduction, say with a GLP-1, then you can get uh, like that, like IL-6 to drop, but mine, that is not an issue for me, visceral fat, but there's just like, it's a little bit of a needle in a haystack working out where your inflammation sources are. And so for me, in the past, it's been joints. So yeah, I've been improving my joint health, also like organ function, improving that, reducing fibrosis, 
but the gut is a weak area for me just because of my diet. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. So my diet being high in fiber, lots of plant compounds to break down both good and bad polyphenols, as well as those defense ones I mentioned earlier, in particular lectins. So you might be saying, well, switch some of your food out and eat more protein. Well, my diet is actually pretty high in protein. And then when you look at that, my there's a gut inflammatory marker, phenylacetylglutamine, and mine is actually really, really high in the 98th percentile. And so it's a metabolite of breaking down phenylalanine, which you get from both plant proteins as well as from animal protein too. So having a high PAG marker can indicate excess amino acid fermentation in the colon. Basically undigested protein is being digested in that lower tract. And then also just dysbiosis in general, you've got more of those microbiomes uh, leaning towards like a protein, uh, like breaking that down. High levels don't just impact the gut, it's also associated with endothelial inflammation, so therefore increasing cardiac risk, as well as uh, kidney stress as well. So aside from reducing my protein intake, well, just slightly, then I think the KPV will help here with improving, you know, that, uh, endothelial sorry epithelial membrane stability so less of those um, uh, like the the protein being fermented in the colon instead then of course you've got down regulation of that inflammatory signaling pathway nf kappa b and therefore i think this is one of my sources just going by the pag marker like this is one of my driving factors of high il6 i did mention about joint health since that july test i've been improving that by even even my shoe wear has made a difference my legs like because i do a lot of walking on the weekends i noticed my legs were aching because i've got 90 percent flat feet having hard shoes just by the end of each day my legs my feet are really really hurting and then because of, obviously i train very hard during the week then my body's just not getting a chance to recover you could make the argument to keep your protocol simple and just cut down on calories i mean because i'm taking the diabetic drug classified as an sglt2 inhibitor so i could be peeing out up to like 400 calories close to that a day of glucose and so that means that i've got more glucose going into my gut and more water movement so that just increases um, wear and tear because you've got less digestion going on just a little bit and so yeah for some people that might be beneficial if I, i'm having a what maybe three thousand possibly even more some days of calories i don't regularly measure and so yeah that could be another option if i was to drop my, my diabetic drug and then reduce calories and then that would bring down that wear and tear. But this channel is all about finding the best of both worlds. Yes, anyone could just eat less food and live longer, but quality of life goes down. So if you're a foodie like me and you like to eat, then it's trying to find ways to not get that trade off with longevity. And that's why I'm, I'm really keen on doing KPV moving forward. As I mentioned, I have been cycling at BPC 157 orally every six months, obviously to improve um, just angiogenesis, healing in the gut. I'm not this is my first time doing kpv so i'm nine days into a cycle and then obviously it's too early to say much that's why i'm awaiting i will be doing an epigenetic test early november i really do feel like i've got some balance in my diet now like i say some people think that volume eating it doesn't work and i i, I categorically say that there is no perfect diet for anyone it does work for some people it's about making those calories taste good hacks around it and yeah, it just means keeping 6% body fat while being satiated on a daily basis. I think that's a win-win scenario. In my 12 immune cell breakdown from the triage part of that test, my baser feels they were a little on the high side. So we should see that coming back and normalizing from that mast cell stabilizing effect of KPV as high levels are associated with mast cell activation. One final biomarker, I touched on it earlier, myeloperoxidase. It's very much a central marker of oxidative stress in that mice model. It dropped by a significant amount. And so mine is in the 80th percentile. So not quite in the red zone, but way outside of optimal. You know, you wanna be in that bottom 10th percentile. I got my KPV from Swiss Chems. I've been using them for coming up to three years now. Also uh, BPC, I've had them from them as well. 
And yeah, what, $140 the KPV. I mean, it's what, $125 roughly with a discount code. So if you're getting my, my cycle to touch onto that, I'm just doing every three months, as I mentioned before, the BPC, doing and well, doing each one of them every six months BPC in, intermittently, and then like doing the KPV in between that. So like three month intervals, either I'm doing BPC or KPV. And so I'm definitely moved doing this moving forward because clearly I've identified some weak areas of mine. And with both of them, I'm doing them over 30 days. So in the case of KPV, doing that 250 micrograms daily. And then with BPC, it works out it's 500 micrograms over 30 days. So KPV, what it averages, what, $120 a year if you're getting that bottle to last a whole year. So it's not too bad. And you know, if you've got these markers that indicate it would be beneficial to you, if you're an athlete, if you've just got a lot of calories going through you in general, there's gonna be some uh, mechanical load on your digestive system. So if you've got any feedback with using either KPV or BPC-157, then please do comment down below. I'm always interested to hear people's response to it, and I do try and reply when I've got time. And I'll be sure to do update content on both of these. I've only really scratched the surface. So if you like that video, then check out this one on 5Amino1MQ. It works on an NAD salvage pathway, so it can boost energy, fat loss, as well as like a cellular repair. Thanks for watching. See you next time.